Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to continue on the CCMP based switched video series. So in the previous video we had just discussed the mechanisms behind rapid spanning tree and in this video what I want to do is highlight the mechanisms behind multiple spanning tree and why you would use it. So I thought the best way to approach this topic was to simplify the topology and really exaggerate the use case so it makes it really really clear why we're doing this. So what I've done is I've just made the topology very, very simple. Now, this is the access layer here, the distal here, and the core is somewhere up here, you know what I mean? And we could have lots of uh, access switches here, but in the case, I'm just highlighting this as just one to make it easier for you to visualize. So, <clears throat> in the case of normal spanning tree, what happens is this. We elect a root bridge. Let's say this is the root bridge. We therefore have root ports, in this case, up this one here and this one here. Now because of that, we've got a designated port and a blocking, but that means that no traffic, no data frames can go across this link. Now the obvious problem there is, let's say this is a, well for any reason, but really if it was a gigabit link or a 10 gig link or a 40 gig link, imagine just having that sit there idle, not doing anything, because it's preventing the the loop. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So, what Cisco did was they decided, you know what, we can improve upon this, and they did improve upon it. They created a pair VLAN instance of spanning tree, and it's just as the name suggests, it is a spanning tree instance pair VLAN. For every VLAN, we have a new spanning tree, so you could do this. In the case of, let's say you've got two VLANs, okay, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. So we've got VLAN 10 and we make this the root bridge and we create a spanning tree for this VLAN 10. So we've got a root port here and a root port here which means that this is going to be forwarding and this is going to be forwarding and effectively this link doesn't get used so traffic can flow up through here or up through here and across and up through here. Okay, But because we're doing a spanning tree instance per VLAN, we can invert that as well and we can also say let's make the root bridge for VLAN 20 this one, okay? Which means that the root port is going to be here for this one and here, crucially, for this one. Which means that we can actually shuttle traffic across this link now and up here and across here and up here. So, <clears throat> we have some form of load balance in doing this. So what might be the problem here? Because it looks like we've solved the issue. We had a block link and now we can forward traffic through that by doing some load balancing by creating a separate VLAN, uh, sorry, a separate spanning tree per VLAN. Now the issue arises when you have lots and lots of VLANs. So let's just say in our exaggerated example, we've only got these two links and we had a thousand VLANs, okay? So we built a spanning tree this way and we block this link here. And for the next VLAN, what we do is, we put it over this way, and we block this link. Now this is fine, but quickly you're going to see that what we're doing is we're just continually building these spanning trees. And what that means is that the switch is in effect got to keep track of all these. It's got to monitor BPDUs and everything. And effectively what happens is this gets out of hand really, really quickly because every one of these instances which you see I'm drawn, the switch has got to track. And this is only a few of them. Once you start getting it hundreds and hundreds or maybe a thousand, you can just imagine just how messy this is going to get. And it's going to attach your switch too much and potentially take it right off. It might just blow out effectively. So, what could be the solution to this problem? Well, the solution was developed as an open standard and called multiple spanning tree. And what multiple spanning tree does, it basically says that rather than having a VLAN, uh, sorry, a spanning tree instance per VLAN, we're going to group VLANs together and create a spanning tree instance for that group. So, what does that mean in the terms of our example there? Let's say we've got a thousand VLANs and we've only got these two uplinks. So we want to have, rather than having one block link, we'll put half the traffic over here and half the traffic over here. 
Now, rather than have to create a thousand spanning trees and put 500 root bridges over this way and 500 that way, what we can do is just say, we'll create instance one, and instance one is going to have the traffic for VLANs one to 500. Okay, and we'll have the path go through here. We'll make this the root bridge. It's a bit of root port. So traffic can freely flow over here and it'll be blocked here. All, if it's VLAN 2, it'll go across here. VLAN 10, it'll go across here. VLAN 400, it'll go across here within that range. And then we're going to create a second instance of multiple spanning tree. And for VLANs 501 to 1000, we're going to make this one the root which means that we're going to have traffic go across here and the root port will be here, so traffic can flow here and the link will be blocked here. So if you're VLAN 505, you're going to go across here. If you're VLAN 600, you'll go across here. If you're VLAN 723, you'll go across here. So effectively, <coughs> we have the load balancing effect of per VLAN spanning tree, but we've got a much smaller footprint. The switch only needs to keep track of these two VLAN, these two spanning tree instances, Composing of all these VLANs rather than have to create a whole new spanning tree for every single VLAN in the pair VLAN spanning tree implementation Okay, so that's the basic theory behind it But what I want to add is that there's a point is that when you're creating this um, Multiple spanning tree you're gonna have to create what's called a region. Okay Now what actually is the region the region basically is going to denote that this is one kind of common a uh, common implementation of the multiple spanning tree. So what does that really mean is that when we create this, so that these switches all have uniformity and they're all speaking the same language to track the same <coughs> spanning tree effectively over them, they're going to have to have the same name. They're going to have to have the same instances of the VLANs and the same revision. Now the revision number is not like in VTP whereby if you've got a higher revision number it somehow takes precedence and wipes the previous config so if you've got a switch with a uh, revision 2 and it meets a switch with revision 5 revision 5 somehow takes precedence and becomes the master effectively it's not like that they just have to match so to basically denote that all these switches are talking the same multiple spanning tree make sure the name matches the instance are the same and the revision numbers the same okay so I think that'll be easier to see once you when I visually configure, uh, configure it, so that's what we'll do just now then. So let's go in and create some of our VLANs. So, <clears throat> let's just do 100 VLANs, just not to tax these switches too much. So VLANs 1 to 100. I think maybe 1 to 1000 might crawl the, might bring the CPU down to a crawl, which is not good for recording a video. <laughs> okay, so VLAN um, 1 to 100. VLAN 1 to 100. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we'll make for. Oh, we'll do spanning tree VLAN 1 to 50. We'll make this the primary one. And spanning tree VLAN 51 to 100. We'll make this the secondary. Now, remember, this is. Rapid spanning tree, which I'm doing here. This is not multiple spanning tree yet. And we'll do spanning tree. Oh, uh, VLAN 51 to 100 root primary. And spanning tree VLAN 1 to 50 root secondary. <coughs> so, in effect, if we do a show span VLAN, say, 60, this bridge is going to be the root. And for um, show span, say, VLAN 20, this bridge is going to be the root. So for the 1 to 50, this will be the root. For 50, 1 to 100, this is the root. So in effect is what we get is we get the load balance and so if we looked at down here do a show span VLAN 10 we're going to have gig01 is the root port which is here 
and we do a show span for one of the higher VLANs, show span entry VLAN 60, this should be inverted. And this is the route. So we're basically load balancing, so where, what really is the problem? Like I say, if I just do a show span entry, you're going to see we've got a span entry for every see that, this is just one show command. You can just see the sheer amount of output. It's having to map this and keep track of all these. So clearly, like this can just keep going on and on, we're only at VLAN 15. If you had a thousand VLANs, you can imagine the computation going on here. So, in effect, is what we're going to do is configure multiple span entry, and we'll make two instances. We'll have an instance one, which is going to have a root bridge as switch one for VLANs 1 to 50, and an instance two, which is going to have switch two as the root bridge for VLANs 51 to 100. We'll have the same effect, but we'll reduce our, fruit, our footprint drastically. So let's go and do it. So the first thing what you need to do is specify the actual mode. So let's go into the switch. Okay. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll do span and tree mode MSD. And we'll do span and tree mode MST. and span entry mode MST. Okay, now let's go back in to the actual MST configuration. We'll do span entry MST configuration. And now we're in the configuration mode. And like I say, we need to specify the instance, the name, and the revision. There's other options like private VLANs and that, but we don't need to actually worry about that just now. So, if we do, um, instance and we'll call this instance one this is going to be span and tree one and we're going to have vlans uh, rather take capital lock off vlan one to fifty and then instance two the second span and tree is going to have fifty one to a hundred now we're going to give it our name we'll just call this ipv0 and we'll just call it revision we'll just use revision number one okay so this has to match on all three. So let's go and copy that configuration. And we do span and tree MST configuration. And we do instance one, and we do VLAN one to 50. And we do instance two, our second span and tree is going to have VLAN 51 to 100. The name is IPv0. This is case sensitive, by the way, so get that right. And revision number one. and span and tree MST configuration and we'll do instance 1 is VLAN 1 to 50 instance 2 is VLAN 51 to 100 the name is IPv0 and the revision number is 1 now what we can do here is like I say instance 1 is for VLANs 1A 150 so what we can do is do a <coughs> span and tree MST and we can put the instance one and we can say root make this the, the root bridge for this for instance one and we can do span and tree MST instance two root secondary and we'll do the inverse of that here we'll do span and tree MST two root primary and span and oh, span and tree MST one root secondary. So in effect as if we do our show span we've got MST one and the root bridge is over gigabit zero zero because it's going here to this switch. But if we go down here this is the root bridge and that's it. <clears throat> and like I say from the point of view of this switch down here show span. This is going to look a lot smaller. That's the full output of the span entry now. It's greatly reduced and like I say we've got gigabit 01 for instance 1 is the root here. You can see that there. So 
for Gigabit Zero One is forwarding for half of the VLANs. That's this one here. And if we just scroll down a little bit, we'll see that for instance two, VLANs 51 to 100, Gigabit Zero Two is the route, and Gigabit Zero One is now blocked. So that means we're putting traffic through here. So now we've achieved the load balancing and we have really reduced the Reduce the demands on our CPU, okay? So this keeps keep things a lot cleaner and a lot sharper. So the last thing which I want to just kind of quickly point out is that if you notice there, you'll probably see that I did a show spanning tree and we also had this instance zero. Now this is a kind of a special instance and it's going to be there by default. You're not going to get rid of it. <clears throat> so let's say in the example here, this is a kind of multiple spanning tree region, okay? But we also somehow connect to switches in a network, <clears throat> but they're not running multiple spanning tree. Okay? They maybe they're older or whatnot, they just don't have the ability, whatever, they're not running MST. So I've only got a region here of MST and these switches don't. Whatever is the root of uh, instance zero, in this case, I think it's this one is the root for instance zero, we didn't change that show span yep so this is the route for instance zero switch one what's going to happen is this whole MSD region is going to present this switch as the route to all of these switches here okay so we might have a root bridge for this for instance two this is the one for instance one but when we present our spanning tree topology to switches which are not running MSD. Whatever is the root of instance zero gets presented to the root of here and these will have root ports connecting, trying to find a path to this switch here. And that's the purpose of instance zero. So that's pretty much the the rough um, overview of MSD. There are a few things to, to cover as well. There's like private VLANs and whatnot and some propagation via VTP version three and stuff like that. But um, that is the overall gist and uh, I think I'll leave the video at that. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.